Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tao, and this is Zhao Feng. We are uh, both researchers from uh, Fire Eye, and this is teamwork with Hui. Uh, I know this is the last talk today, so I promise it is uh, short and uh, it is very easy. And so uh, today we talk about uh, spear phishing attacks against iOS, and uh, you know the mass attack. So uh, for uh, we are from Fire Eye. You all know we focus on targeted attacks. So uh, as the mobile team, we focus on the targeted attacks against the mobile devices. And uh, this year, Google generated a report to describe the Android threat. And uh, the stats shows that less than 0.02% Android devices attacked by spear phishing attacks. And most of them attacked through side loaded, side -loaded APKs. And so here is the interesting question about iOS. We all know that the jailbreak is so hard and even harder and harder. And no third party markets. So it seems it is much more secure. And let's check it. And we, we, we check all the possibility of uh, spear phishing attacks against uh, iOS, and uh, we found that, in fact, it is not so hard. It is easy, it is effective, it is flexible, and uh, it might be long new. OK, here's the agenda. So first, we go through br briefly about the review process, and then we talk talks about uh, mass attacks one by one. And we all know, yeah, a lot of speakers have, have mentioned that the review process, and it is, you know, they are pretty com complex, including more than 100 rules. And uh, you cannot uh, use long public APIs, you cannot, cannot download code, you cannot install other as crypto code, and uh, you cannot create a fake uh, uh, home screen. You cannot uh, abuse the uh, location. You cannot uh, abuse uh, background services, and so on. And, and although the process is not perfect, but it is very, very effective. And uh, as a result, uh, there, there is very few malware on long jailbroken iOS. But how to bypass it? The, already multiple solutions proposed by academic areas, such as obfuscation or GK attacks. Um, but from the, you know, the real world, it might be even more easier. Um, attackers can use the iOS developer enterprise program. And this program enables a company to sign in-house apps with its enterprise distribution certificate. And then they can distribute the apps to employees using uh, enterprise provision provides. The best of all is that there is no pr review process. Uh, for an uh, official enterprise program, the price is uh, $299 per year. But on some third party uh, online service, you can sign an app once for less than $20. So this is very, very cheap for attackers. And we call those public apps distributed using enterprise provisioning profiles on the internet as in public apps. And in public apps are distributed in using the ITMS services, this kind of schemes. And we found that they are popular across the whole world. And so, now you, you you can find that uh, you can find that the in public apps are perfect for spear phishing attacks. There is no re no review process. And they can abuse pro provide API. They can create a fake UI. They can abuse the functionality, and uh, they can exploit vulnerabilities. And, and it is very easy for and it is very easy for victims to you know. Uh, it is very useful for attackers to mislead users, uh, victims, to uh, click uh, the install. You can, you can change the description to whatever you want. And after the click, uh, attackers can use uh, multiple uh, tricks to do whatever they want. Uh, and uh, today we will focus on mass attack. Um, mass attack uh, 
in fact, uh, we have reported, uh, you know, four kinds of mass attack, and including more than five vulnerabilities. Um, okay, the first one is a very, you know, I think most people today are very familiar familiar with the first one is the uh, upper uh, mask. It is very very easy. Uh, if the bundle ID in the enterprise signed app is the same as the you know the some installed app, uh, for example Gmail from the original app store, uh, the, the original app will be replaced by the new fake malicious app. Uh, this uh, was first reported by Stephen at uh, 2013. Uh, and uh, first, uh, uh, first, we further found that uh, after install, installation, all the sensitive data kept, uh, kept unchanged. This is, uh, you know, very, very crazy. Uh, so attackers can, uh, can steal all the credentials, all the cookies, all, all, all the sensitive data without any, you know, uh, obstacle. And, uh, and uh, we, we reported to Apple last uh, in, uh, September. In fact, we found it uh, last uh, July. And uh, Apple fixed it uh, this uh, in 8.1.3, should be this, uh, this February. And uh, yeah, uh, welcome to uh, for, for this demo. OK. Now I'm going to show uh, our mask uh, uh, demo. Uh, this is our first mask demo. Uh, first, I want to mention that uh, this is a real uh, iOS device running uh, iOS 8.1, uh, non-geobrook. And uh, we can see uh, from the left that uh, here is a web UI from the attacker's server. So currently it's a uh, sample of the upload uh, directory. So on this device, we have already installed a Gmail app from the official app store and log into a, a, a valid user. So we can see that here are some uh, unread messages and uh, uh, some of them are user sensitive uh, messages about uh, Google sign-in notification. Okay, here comes our attack. Our attack starts with a phishing uh, SMS message containing a download link about uh, the new Flappy Bird game. It's very uh, high probability that the user will click this link because the official version of, of uh, Flappy Bird has been uh, removed from the App Store. If the user click this link, Okay, if we take the user to a website and the prompt uh, uh, install uh, alert, if the user click install, as we all know that uh, actually the Flappy Bird isn't installed, and malicious Gmail has been installed and replaced the orig uh, original official Gmail from App Store. So uh, let's waste some time because the network. Okay, now if, if the victim uh, tried to open the, uh, this uh, malicious Gmail for the first time, then a prompt of trust will pop up on screen. And uh, this time for this demo, I will uh, tap trust. And literally uh, in our next demo, I will show you uh, how, uh, what will happen if I uh, tap don't trust and how we bypass don't trust. This time I tap trust. Okay, as you can see, uh, there's a message so yes, you are pwned on, the, uh, on top of the screen. Uh, uh, this is just for demo, uh, POC demo, uh, but in, uh, as we all know, in real world, attacker won't be so nice to display such information. So, uh, so uh, uh, if, uh, now let's look at what's this, uh, uh, Gmail, malicious Gmail uh, app can do. It, uh, it displays exactly the same as the original official Gmail and about the unread messages and the existing messages in the mailbox. So it's very 
uh, it, it's very hard for a user to distinguish between the malicious Gmail and the original official Gmail. Okay, now let's uh, let's see what's happened uh, be, uh, be behind the scenes. Let's see the attack server. Let's refresh uh, refresh uh, this page. You can see that uh, a database file has been already uploaded to the attacker server. Let's open the database file. Okay, I have to uh, drag screen, drag this dialog here. You can see there are uh, many uh, tables used by Gmail app. So uh, um, among them, this table contains, as we can see here, Contains message. Okay. Here is subject. It's the first mail new sign from iPhone, and the list here is the message body. Full message body will be displayed here. So uh, actually, uh, at least just for a demo, actually the. Malicious app can access all the uh, previous data in the original Gmail app. So it's very dangerous uh, if, if such an attack happens. However, uh, our attack hasn't done it yet. Uh, as, uh, as we can see, uh, the, uh, the malicious G Gmail app has been switched to background. But, but uh, what, if, uh, what it can do? If uh, when uh, operators uh, switch background, let's see another web UI of the uh, attack server. Let's focus on this page, and I will send uh, this iPhone uh, as a message from another phone. I have tapped some random strings and uh, sent us a message here. Okay, here the message comes. You can see that uh, as long as the as a message is sent to the victim's phone, the upload uh, it is uploaded uh, to the attacker's server uh, along with the uh, mo uh, mobile number. So actually, the the attacker can monitor at the background about all the incoming and up, uh, outgoing calls and as a message. So uh, uh, even uh, and we we won't demo here, but even though the attacker re re reboot the device, the malicious Gmail still can monitor uh, all these behaviors in background. So this is our first demo mass attack. Thanks. Thanks, Jofo. Yeah, let's go back to the talk. Long <laughs> form. Okay, let's uh, continue. Yeah. Uh, so um, here is the the second uh, mask attack, UIR mask. And um, um, this is also you know an old, very known issue, but a lot fixed uh, by Apple. And um, um, if the malicious app. Or oh, some other app can contain the same URL scheme with the, with some you know beline app. Then there is a conflict of URL schemes. Uh, and uh, on iOS, the the config handling is not uh, so clear. And uh, um, according to our experiments, uh, attackers can can try to find a way to hijack can always hijack the URL scheme. Uh, it means if some app calls this URL scheme, all, uh, the malicious app will always get the, the call and, ser uh, and serve the, 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 the app, the request. Um, it, it, it was reported first by Nitesh at uh, 2010, and uh, both main scheme and the copy schemes can be hijacked. And we found that this scheme can be used to bypass phone trust. And uh, this vulnerability also was fixed uh, in 8.1.3. Uh, 
And I think Chris has m mentioned the UI scheme. It is uh, you know, the inter-app communication mechanism between iOS apps. In the Facebook app register the FB auth UI scheme, and uh, this uh, third-party app, Alice, registered this uh, FB1184 and so on, this uh, callback URL scheme. And, uh, and the Alice want to you know, authenticate using uh, Facebook, it will call a FB auth URL scheme to uh, uh, invoke a Facebook app, and uh, after the authentication, the Facebook uh, will call the, this callback URL to back to Alice, uh, the Alice app. Uh, okay, drop on, we will show the second demo. Okay, uh, I will connect an, another phone because that phone has been compromised. Okay, here's our uh, second uh, mask demo. Uh, first, uh, I, I would mention that this phone is running a, sorry, this phone is running a iOS 8.2 beta version. Uh, of course, it's, it's non Uh And I have already installed some apps from the uh, uh, original App Store. And uh, uh, this, uh, the first steps uh, of this uh, demo is exactly the same as the previous one, so I won't uh, do that again. Uh, currently, it has go to uh, that is uh, uh, the user has clicked click a SMI link and uh, download a malicious Gmail app and replace the original Gmail on the phone. So currently, uh, on this phone, there are three apps. First is. Uh, official Facebook from App Store, and uh, another fan run game from official of App Store. And this, uh, the last one is the malicious Gmail, which has re replaced the original uh, official Gmail app. Sorry. Need the, the connection dis disconnect. Okay. I've lost the connection. Okay, so when I try to open the malicious Gmail first time on this phone, it will prompt of trust. And as I promised uh, in the first demo, I will tap don't trust this time. Okay, it, it, it. so uh, here we are dem uh, demo uh, demonstrating how to bypass this don't, uh, prompt of uh, trust by uh, typing the don't trust. And uh, uh, later, uh, well, I want to play the fun run game and share the uh, scores with my friends. I will click use Facebook on the uh, left corner. So here comes our tech game. Uh, our m malicious app has been launched and uh, it shows that uh, you are hijacked. Uh, in re, re, in real in real attack, this message won't be displayed, and is uh, 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 to the Facebook login page have been shown to app because the user have already tried to connect with the with his Facebook account. So, what if uh, the user now trying to log Facebook? We can see from the attacker's server. Web UI that each key I I uh, input here will be uploaded to the attacker server, include the password. Okay, uh, what happened behind the scene is that our malicious Gmail app has our, has regist registered the FB login U URL scheme. So when the fan run game tried to open the Facebook app. Uh, we have already hijacked that URL scheme. Instead, it, our Gmail app has been launched. So this is our uh, mask attack tool for uh, has the problem of trust. We also mentioned that even if uh, we never touch the malicious Gmail, uh, this attack will also work. Thanks. Thanks, Arpun.
Okay, let's go. So please disconnect it. Okay, and so just now we showed how to you know hijack uh, the UIR scheme using a malicious, I mean in public app. But in fact, uh, the UIR masks uh, are very very popular on App Store. There are three types of uh, UIR masks on App Store. The first one is the unjustified. We don't know why they you know they are such a UIR mask. Uh, second is the 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 design of the feature, such as uh, Bascom Bascom anywhere filter browser, use uh, the UIR mask to hijack Google Chrome to implement some you know filter function. And the third category, you know, contains a lot of uh, UIR masks, and, and uh, many due to that uh, some mistake inherited from some uh, template, some development template. For example, uh, this famous FB, sorry, FB1184, there are more than 8,000 apps registered this UIR scheme. Um, Okay, uh, let's describe a little more about the first category. Um, Alipay, Alipay is a very popular app in China. It is uh, very similar to PayPal, um, and a lot of pay, uh, a lot of apps use sorry a lot of apps use uh, Alipay to you know do some uh, online purchase. However. There is another app called the Zhang TV app on the App Store. If you install that app, all the Alipay scheme will be hijacked to this app. And we don't know why. And in fact, you know, Zhang TV just hijacks the hijacks the UR and and that's nothing. Um, but it's you know from but it shows that. It, it will be a really big challenge for Apple review process. And uh, the current review process um, doesn't uh, effectively identify this kind of uh, you know, conflicts. Um, and uh, there, are existing, there are so many existing UR scheme conflicts there in the App Store. So it, it will be you know, a great chance for attackers to uh, to, to exploit such an issue, to, uh, to embed some phishing attack in, into the App Store. Okay. okay, here is the third mask attack, extension mask. Um, extension is, uh, yeah, Chris uh, <laughs> mentioned this to, uh, earlier too. Uh, extension is uh, introduced uh, from iOS 8. Um, and, uh, in the in the bundle, there are not only the main app, uh, there also might be multiple extension, and uh, each extension has its own bundle ID. So uh, we can just uh, you know we, we we don't need to conflict with the main app uh, bundle ID. We can just conflict with the with the extension bundle ID. And in this way, we can re replace the the extension. And uh, you know some extensions are really really powerful. Yeah, for example, the VPN extensions. Uh, in this way, we we can bypass the don't don't trust the user. Don't need to click the trust or even they can uh, click the don't trust. The extension will be work uh, anyway. Uh, uh, spe specifically for VPN hijacking, uh, it will be more interesting. And uh, you know, uh, uh, VPN extension. If you want to write a uh, uh, VPN extension, you must get uh, the correct uh, entitlement from Apple. Without uh, such an uh, entitlement, you cannot write a uh, VPN extension even using enterprise uh, certificates. Uh, however, in, in this way, attackers can you know, just replace uh, existing VPN extensions such as uh, Junus, uh, drop on driver shoe in the demo, and uh, bypass the whole entitlement thing. Okay, Zhao Hong, show the third demo. Okay, uh, b before I show the demo uh, live, I want to uh, explain uh, what I will do here. Uh, 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 in the following demo, I will uh, uh, 
perform mask test on the Juniors app. It's a VPN app from, uh, developed by Juniper. And uh, for a VPN app, it contains a main app and a VPN plugin. And uh, I will use this demo to inject the uh, uh, PUC code into the AE, AE agent. It's a system uh, daemon. Uh, the PUC code is here. It, uh, uh, it, it dumps a uh, PUC daily loaded log to the system log uh, every uh, three seconds. Uh, so uh, I will also uh, demo that uh, uh, the uh, this PUC code will block the device from a true reboot and uh, persistent installation uh, of the malicious uh, uh, delay on the device. So I will uh, close this uh, list with PowerPoint. Okay, uh, uh, just now I just downloaded the Juno's Juner, uh, Pulse app from the official app store. And uh, I use the uh, same device. The, uh, this is device running iOS 8.2 beta. And uh, uh, here uh, comes uh, comes the text scenario uh, that uh, uh, the user taps a link in a uh, malicious uh, in a phishing SMS and installed an app on the device. So different from the previous demo, this time uh, a new app was installed on his phone, but it didn't replace the original Juno's Pouts app. Uh, uh, however, in the background, this out app has a VPN plugin and uh, has uh, that VPN, VPN plugin has replaced uh, the uh, VPN plugin in the Juno's Pulse app. So later, when I try to use Juno app to access uh, my company's VPN, okay, uh, configure. You can see from syslog. First, uh, let me uh, fill the required required URL field. VPN dot fire i dot com. Okay. Up, uh, after I click C, you can see that our our PUC code has been loaded by the any agent. Okay, I will highlight any agent. So uh, the log message uh, output the PUC daily loaded every three uh, three seconds. So our PUC code has lo uh, has loaded by the any agent. Uh, in fact, uh, currently the attacker has the ability to run arbitrary code with the same entitlement uh, of a e engine. It's very terrible. Now, if I try to remove the Juno's, Juno's app here, you can see that our PUC code still run in background. Further, if I if I try to power off reboot the phone, start to power off, you can see that the screen really dim, but in the background the PUC code still runs. So it's a fake reboot. That means that the system uh, because the connection didn't dis disconnect, so the, it means the phone's still alive. So, uh, to my uh, experience, uh, it's about uh, one or two minutes uh, waiting for the white apple to display on the, at, on the phone. So let's wait them. Uh, during this time, if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand. Okay.
Okay, please. Uh, yeah, uh, because it, uh, it, uh, I didn't mention that A2 beta is a pre-released pre version before the 8.1.3. Yeah, that's a developer version. Yeah. No more, no more questions? <laughs> so, okay, we can. Yeah, need one more minute. Uh, I will, I will uh, first explain here. Later, even if the white apple shows, that doesn't mean the device really boots. It's only a uh, watchdog that, uh, a watchdog demon that kills the screen bar and the screen bar restarts. So the, in this attack, the device never really reboots. So, uh, the malicious, uh, code will always run in the background. Okay. Here it comes, the white apple. You can see from log that uh, the uh, the disconnection never disconnect, uh, the connection never disconnect, and uh, our log message uh, still prints. And uh, if I slide the screen, you will see that the Juno's app goes back again, even though I try to remove it uh, just now. Okay, please. Uh, no, I, I, the PUC code just for lines. I, I didn't do anything. Yeah, so, so it's a system behavior. Yeah. Okay, so here, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a very good question. The only way to to solve this this scenario is use a, a hard reboot. The hard reboot is uh, is a is a real re a real reboot. If I do a hard reboot here, then you you can see that the connection will disconnect. So that will solve uh, this situation. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, sorry. Uh, what? Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, exactly. Yeah. Because currently our our PUC code is is running as a dilib. Yeah. Yeah. So any agent just uh, load our uh, malicious dilib to execute. Okay. Here is our uh, master text uh, demo three. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, uh, for the first, uh, sorry for the, for the for the last one. In we reported this to Apple at the last August, but uh, you know not fixed yet, so we cannot disclose it, disclose it yet. But we can only mention that uh, it, uh, this vulnerability can can de demolish many system apps, including the new Apple Watch app, and uh, health and. Uh, and those important system maps, and it it can also, of course, it can also demolish all the normals and leave only you know white board in the screen, and uh, and uh, it, this will enable attackers to get a, you know a better chance to uh, perform further phishing attacks. Okay, uh, yeah, we have finished all the mass attacks. Uh, yeah, let's uh, briefly go through uh, the you know relative attacks uh, in, in the spear phishing against iOS. And this uh, yeah attackers can abuse uh, private private APIs. For example, just now in the demo, Chaofeng uses uh, um, yeah uh, this private API to get the incoming SMS message, and uh, yeah uh, the. Are still a lot of other private APIs because this is this uh, you know uh, in public uh, apps so you can do whatever you want. 
you know, and uh, yeah, we created a fake UI, and it is not hard. And you can just repackage some design apps and exploits. Yeah, and especially for older iPhone, iOS, you can exploit the kind of vulnerabilities through you know any agent that lives. Yeah, and here is a mystery that uh, everybody thinks that uh, iOS update very very fast, and all the iOS devices are keep you know uh, up, up to date. But in fact, it's not so fast. And even after two months, uh, you know, two months after the iOS 8.1.3 released, uh, we found that um, around 30 percent to 60 percent devices in some high-profile enterprises are still vulnerable to all the mass attacks. So the attackers have have a, I think a, around a, you know three months uh, window to attack all the known vulnerabilities. Okay, uh, about the persistency. And Jofen just now showed how to you know background monitoring, how to uh, auto run after the boot. Uh, but in fact, we have another easy way to auto run. And you can just uh, claim the, your app is a uh, VoIP app. Then uh, Apple will, you know, re re reboot, uh, will start uh, your app automatically after the system reboot. So even uh, after the, you know, the first, uh, first restart just now for the VPN, if you, uh, you can auto, auto run, auto start your app, you still can, you know, can pre uh, prevent from being, uh, uh, uninstalling. Okay. Uh, another challenge for uh, persist persistency is OCSP. Uh, if Apple uh, uh, finds that uh, some enterprise certificates are abused, they can revoke those uh, certificates. But uh, they, uh, currently, they use uh, OCSP to, to do that. And they uh, check the certificates uh, around every three to seven days. Um, but uh, you know, attackers have uh, Plenty of time to exploit uh, uh, some vulnerabilities to change the timeout field, um, and uh, th those uh, um, OCS OCMP uh, uh, data are stored in some SQLite in plain text, so it is not so hard to change them. And of course, you can do some VPN hijacking or network hi hijacking or DNS hijacking to just uh, just block the uh, connection to those OCSP servers. Okay, and that's it. And so here is uh, some discussion, the current dilemma of iOS security. Um, yeah, Apple, currently, uh, Apple designed a very good sandbox and, uh, you know, very good uh, review process, but, uh, but unfortunately, uh, security vendors uh, cannot uh, implement uh, system level protections. And, uh, the in public malware can freely call all powerful private APIs and exploit vulnerabilities, while those the kind of secure apps cannot do. Uh, and furthermore, uh, classic network security devices in in company networks uh, has a very very little visibility for iOS app traffic, so they cannot protect a mobile device all the time. Okay, here is the conclusion. Uh, attackers can use uh, in public apps of uh, all app store apps to conduct uh, master attacks against iOS to uh, perform spear phishing attacks. They can gather accounts, passwords, data, and uh, keep it uh, persistently. And now iOS security faces a dilemma. And we suggest that uh, maybe Apple can consider bringing dedicated security vendors into iOS for enterprise level security solutions. Okay, that's all. Thanks. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>